Oh, hi everyone. Today, I could be making a brand new video that I'm going to make a new video like no other. That this year will mark the 40th anniversary of Inspector Gadget. As I noticed that this, this cybernetically but insanely powerfully flawed detective who appears to be a love child to both of Super Mario and Dynamut appears to be some sort of an interesting example that this was one of my favorite cartoons growing up with. As a kid, I saw this cartoon and I kind of enjoy it. And I'm getting ready to make a request to a fan favorite YouTuber of mine. His name is Minty Comedic Arts. That I know this YouTuber that this is going to be a big request to him. So, as I noticed this when he first made his appearance in the pilot episode that debuted on December 4th, 1982. This is how the story dealt with gadget adventures throughout the world with his kid friend Penny and her yellow dog with a red nose named Brain who does not have a relation to... The mouse who wants to take over the world from Pinky and the Brain. For some reason, they had no idea what they're doing. But I don't know what they're going to say if they want to think of something. As I know what kind of organization called MAD, led by Dr. Claw, is trying to do something bizarre to what the Brain would do to the Animaniacs. But what would no word of God mention... If it's going to be a reality that we're going to think of. Let's find out what, they, what they're going to say. Gee, Brain, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. What? <laughs> Try to take over the freaking world? Oh my god. This does not make any sense. I know this whole Inspector Gadget cartoon pretty much predates Animaniacs by a landslide of 11 years from 1982 to 93. That's also the same year Cheers debuted. As I know, I'm going to save that for another video later. As I noticed that for a cartoon like this, this predates Animaniacs by a landslide of its foreshadowing use that this cartoon might have influenced Steven Spielberg's idea to create his own cartoon, combining with Roger Rabbit. How funny. That I actually haven't seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So, enough about this idea that we could get Gadget Boy, Gadget and the Gadgetees, and the Inspector Gadget 2015 reboot, and Inspector Gadget Field Trip. And let's not forget his movie, Inspector Gadget the Movie, which was based on the unproduced Superman 5 movie that never came to be. As I noticed, the connections are quite interesting. In this unproduced idea what Superman lives could, look, could have looked like in that script of mine, I noticed that both Tim Burton and Kevin Smith were originally involved in producing an unproduced idea involving around Nicolas Cage portraying Superman and the concept of Superman would be quite very interesting. As I noticed that this is one of the most interesting examples of why Nicolas Cage, who stepped down from portraying Shrek from the unproduced 1995 Shrek script by Steven Spielberg, this is his biggest mistake of what it could have looked like. As development started around 1994, to 1985, in what Kevin Smith conceived it before moving on to do Clerks. This is why we have to explain the connection of this one to the one that I was talking about from the 1980s. As development began around the filming, before the filming started in 1986, now we need to find an interesting concept. Well, the only one thing I can think of is that the plot is very, very different. That it could feel like an out-of-date sequel to, like, 
Probably Superman for the quest for peace. But it could be more of a direct sequel than an outright sequel. As it feels like a coin to cancelled movies, I don't know what happened to this movie. For obvious reasons, a coin to cancelled movies, this movie is where Brayak teams up with Mr. Mixiplex. If you combine it with the Superman 3 script, as they summon Kryptonian monster Doomsday to kill Superman by blocking out the sun to make Superman powerless. Although, as a result of everyone believing that Superman died, it turns out that Jimmy Olsen, who would be voiced by the rumored Chris Rock for some reason, would create a black suit for Superman out of kryptonite. That he found some sort of black kryptonite to build some sort of a suit of armor for Superman to protect himself. But Mr. Mixiplect gives Brainiac a fusion dad to Lex Luthor, becoming Lexiac, as he uses the assets of LexCorp to take control of Superman. But as as a result of this, Jimmy has built a, a device called K in what the new high tech device would regenerate his powers. As it was expected to film in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as the setting for Metropolis, as principal photography was about to begin the summer of 1988, all of a sudden, this is the main reason why this Godzilla movie from 1988 might have abrupted the production of that movie. And not only Godzilla 1988 was the only one that came out in the summer of 1988, there was also Small Soldiers. Now, speaking of Small Soldiers, this movie and Small Soldiers were the only movies that cancelled Superman Lives forever. Specifically because of the backlash involving around the, the script of the concept. But all just because no one would afford the risk of protecting it, around the time they were trying to film it in New York City or in the state of Ohio, it just backfired. Then, when Burton moved on to do Sleepy Hollow, this idea was recycled into Wild Wild West, where Will Smith would fight off against a giant spider in the third act. Although he was originally involved in The Matrix, this is why this concept was also used for Superman Doomsday, and Supergirl Lives would also pay homes to Superman Lives, but a more gender-flipped version. As I noticed... As a result of its cancellation, despite the chaos caused by Godzilla 1988 and Small Soldiers, the, the setting for Pittsburgh that was going to be used for Superman Lives was used for Inspector Gadget the movie. So I'm guessing this movie replaced it. So, occasionally, Brendan Fraser was offered the role of Inspector Gadget during development. And David Boreanaz was almost chosen to portray Dr. Claw in this live action movie that we know of. But let me tell you the true reason about the writing. Well, the plot of its writing is very, very simple. Despite having Matthew Broderick from Lion King and Rupert Everett from Shrek 2, let's find out what happens. John Brown lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with his Penny and her beagle dog Brain is dreaming of becoming a police officer, but he works as a security guard for Bradford Robotics Laboratory. However, Artemis Bradford, alongside Brenda, are designing some sort of idea for the gadget program. However, they were working with Sanford Skolex, a tycoon who was creating army of androids to kill everyone. However, this results in a tragic accident involving around a bowling ball that got both John and Skolex killed. As a result of their near-death experiences, Brenda decides to, to claim that John uh, is still alive, this time as Inspector Gadget. Despite being cursed with awesome, he becomes powered by a control chip, what John is giving orientation from Brenda and Penny, and it backfires, realising that despite... Skolex gang and mechanical claw with the help of Kramer is that where the concept gets crazy. Despite the Harvard like situation at the university, the problem is from the laboratory 
Gadget would stop two criminals who had tried to rob a car and uses that car to get involved in driving. That sounds like Matt Reeves is the Batman had an idea from Inspector Gadget. Although at the at the at the charity ball, Skolex would approach Brenda, having knowing her Harvard wants to prove that he wants to win her heart, unless he tries to steal her ideas and designs. Unimpressed with Gadget, Quibby decides to assign him to manual his assignments rather than just investigating his Artemis's murder. Upset for doing this, he gets he finds a piece of scrap metal relayed to Skolex with help from Penny, realizing he created Robo Gadget to be an evil counterpart to Inspector Gadget. That sounds like a blatantly fun idea of how Sonic Adventure 2 came to be when we had Sonic and Shadow being involved in it. And that was in 2001. This one's from 99. As a result of this, after everything that Gadget's been through, from a result of, of Gadget trying to make friends with Sykes, this time, uh, Gadget and Brenda chase Claw in a limousine, but they both fall off in the roof of the bridge. However, when the latter's head is tossed to the ridder to his death, Gadget chases after to Claw. As a result of this, he goes into the helicopter, but Claw destroys it, and Gadget gets struck, handing in the landing skis. However, he deconstructs the pen with his finger, using one of the Gadget to, to use some ink chamber, sending it bouncing around, hitting the butter of Claw's claw within the process. This malfunctions the helicopter within the joystick stick itself. Brenda leaps out of the helicopter onto his back. They fall down safely on into the side skyscraper, using a power to land safely. When Claw parachutes down, he ends up getting strapped in a jail center cage-like thing in the gadget mobile. Although he's captured, he gets arrested for this, and they put a repentant on the reformed Sykes, who is now happy with being with his new friends of making peace with them. Saluted and launched by Quibby, the actual member of the police force, Gadget departs with Brenda and Pay as Claw vows rage, he's taken away by the cops, and Gadget begins a relationship with Brenda. All I can say is, this movie was a major improvement. I like the CGI special effects. I like the way the CGI is handled on Gadgetmobile. I like the setting of Pittsburgh being fitting for Riverton, Ohio. And I love this movie. I would probably think it's one of my favourite movies to be based on a, on a cartoon. While the hate from the mixed and negative reviews from the critics, I gave some praise for the acting, but I criticised the screenplay because it bugs me. And the visual effects are, are awesome. The humour is pretty much staying true to the text of its faithfulness to what I saw in the first Spider-Man movie. Like I said earlier, what it could have been I know what could have looked like earlier in the movie. I consider Inspector Gadget, the movie, as a spiritual predecessor to Spider-Man 2002. As I know, it's, it fits perfectly as a superhero movie. But despite the solidly decent soundtrack, I'm going to give this movie, like, a somewhat decent uh, 8 out of 10. As I noticed that it could have been better if Superman was involved. But I wouldn't like the sequel because it was a bit too terrible. Despite being faithfully true to the text, it's a bit too outered. That's not my cup of tea. But if that other way, if you hit the like button, you could subscribe to now from now on. Bye bye.